Are you ready? Stand by. Hundreds of thousands of Canadians are involved in shooting sports. We traveled the country to bring you the events and the people that make this incredible community unlike any other. Welcome to the CCFR's Canada Downrange. Hey, my name is Pete Durham. I'm the match director for the IMSA shoots here, the Gold Sportsman's Club. Oh, my name is Howard Sims. I'm from Paris, Ontario. The sport we're shooting today is called uh, IMSA. Uh, that's a short form for uh, International Handgun Metallic Silhouette Association. Um, it's been around the world. They have it in Brazil and all of different countries. Well, there's a whole number of categories that we can shoot. And basically, if you have a handgun, we can find a category that you can shoot. IMSA originated, uh, first of all, with in Mexico. What they used to do in Mexico was put live animals out at various ranges, and the person that shot the animal that was their animal, that was their prize for the day. Uh, well, it, a couple of the Americans saw this and they said, this is a great sport, but nah, you know, it's not gonna go well in, in the USA. So they brought it up in, into Arizona where they had the matches there and they brought in steel targets. My name is Lorena Niemi and I help my dad run the match. I've been shooting for 26 years. I've been helping my dad for as long as he's been running the match, uh, which I actually probably would have lost track of time on, but uh, a lot of years, a lot of years. I used to come and just spot for my dad, so I'd come and watch him shoot, um, and then eventually I got into shooting myself. Today we ran three different courses of fire. We ran the small bore competition, we ran the field pistol competition, and, and we ran the big bore competition. The small bore competition is limited to 22s. Each of the competitions have four stages in them. So there's chickens, pigs, turkeys, and rams. And for the 22 competition, the chickens are at 25 yards, the pigs are at 50, the turkeys are at 75, and the rams are at 100. For field pistol, um, that's a different uh, style of shooting, so you have to shoot standing, um, which in the other two you don't necessarily have to do. And those are half the size of the big boar targets. Chickens are at 25, the pigs are at 50, the turkeys are at 75, and the rams are at 100. For the big boar, um, that's all center fire that you're shooting at those targets, and those are out at further distances. So we start the chickens at 50, the pigs are at 100, the turkeys are at 150, and we shoot out to 200 yards at the Rams. So, and center fire and small bore both you can shoot in varying positions um, with varying firearms. So there's different categories within each of those courses of fire, um, which would be production, which is basically shooting a gun that's straight off the production line with no modifications. There's revolver, which is shooting a revolver. Um, there is an unlimited category, which has, you're allowed up to a 14 inch barrel. Usually it's uh, at some slightly more accurate firearm. And then there's an unlimited any sight category, which is um, the unlimited with a scope. I could shoot, if I really wanted to, a revolver, and I would shoot it in revolver class to start with. Then I could shoot it same gun in production, I could shoot it in standing, and I could shoot it in unlimited if I wanted to. So I could shoot one gun in all four uh, categories, no problem whatsoever. And then when we shoot, um, each of the stages, the chickens, pigs, turkeys, and rams, will have 10 targets. So you get 30 seconds to load for your first five shots, and then you have two minutes to make those shots at the targets, and you have to shoot from left to right, and essentially you shoot at each one, and if you miss it, you move to the next, and, and so on and so on, and so you, until you've shot your five shots, or until the two minutes has expired. The gun has to be supported by you. You cannot have a, a sandbag rest or anything else like that. You have to support it, so all your shakes and movements come very evident in a lot of it, and that's what we're allowed to do with those categories. We shoot um, 22 handguns out to 100 yards. We shoot center fire straight wall cartridges out to 100 yards. Anything goes out to 200 yards. 
There are categories for iron sights, categories for scopes. Now what we've done here as well is we've opened it up. In order to get more people shooting, we allow 22 rifles on the 22 course of fire. We allow pistol caliber lever guns on the field pistol course of fire. And we allow any lever gun loaded with lead on the 200 meter course. Everybody shoots against somebody in their own class. Everything's classified. So when you go to the line and shoot, you're only competing against other people of a similar skill. And we're the only range left in Canada now shooting in. We used to have four ranges in Ontario. You could shoot every weekend. But those days are long gone. We want change with a load of government regulations that came in as to how you could have a range set up and some ranges just could not afford to do it. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge, SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, The Calgary Shooting Centre, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. We have a big problem now because young people aren't, aren't getting involved. I mean, the youngest one here now is my grandson, who's 14. But he tends not to talk about it to his friends because people just don't understand. Um, they don't get any exposure. I think the media is very biased against handguns. And uh, it's amazing when you do bring people to see who know nothing about it how interested they are and they start to realize things, but there's just no exposure. It seems to be that the sport is losing traction with, with younger crowds. I don't know if people are more interested in the speed shooting sports um, as opposed to this is obviously not a speed event, it's very much more um, an accuracy technical um, event. So I don't know if it's, if it's that or just generally, you know, the general sentiment around shooting sports um, in general maybe is diminishing people's interest in doing it. People have perceptions of firearms that are tough to, tough to sway. We're frowned upon, basically, and the way it is now. So I don't know how you get young people into the sport other than the way I'm doing it, bringing my young people into it. Shooting's a really bonding experience with my grandpa. We come out here, we have fun. It's just fun to shoot together. Yeah, it's a real family aff affair for us, shooting sports. I mean, um, my dad was the first to do it and I came along with him and uh, my husband and my three sons now have all participated. So it's, uh, it's a lot of fun, three ge generations of shooters. We've made family vacations of shooting, uh, so we'll go down to the States, all of us, and my mom and dad, and my husband and my kids, and we go down there and shoot. So it's really, it's enabled us to have something that we, we all can share, and I think it's always fun to do things with your children. You don't always get that opportunity to literally be kind of doing the same thing together. Everybody helps each other out despite the fact that we may be competing against each other. I mean, you'll see people on the line spotting for someone else to try and help them refine it. It really is just about getting better and bettering yourself each time you come out. Um, in this particular sport, it's like you can shoot literally anything um, and find a, a category and a classification to shoot from. So, yeah, I'd encourage women and young, young kids, young children um, to come out and, and try it because it is a lot of fun. We're here uh, with Odell Engineering. It's my company, this is our 24th year. Uh, we've been in the business of uh, firearms and ammunition wholesale and distribution across Canada since we started the company in 1995. And we, we work here in central Ontario because we find this is an excellent location to be able to service the entire Canadian market. And we do, we have dealers coast to coast. The purpose of our day here today and why we brought everybody out to the Galt Sportsman's Club is to educate some of our people. Introduce new products is, is probably the biggest thing for folks to be able to see. It, it's really a great day for everybody to see what's new in the business, learn some stuff and be able to take that back to their shop. 
My name's Dean Carr, I'm with Select Shooting Supplies in Cambridge, Ontario. We work on the competition action shooting market. We sponsor a lot of competition events. And Odell's got a couple of new uh, shotguns in their lineup this year that are specifically built for action competition shooting. We've been selling them, haven't had a chance to shoot them. So we came out today to shoot those and see how they perform. And they've performed flawlessly. It's important to us because we like to stand behind everything we sell. If we don't believe in it, we don't carry it. So we want to know that when we're recommending a product to a customer that we've shot it, we understand it, we know it's going to do the job that they're buying it for and they get the right product for the job at a good price. It's a lot easier to give a personal experience going, I liked this gun because of options A, B and C versus saying, well, the book says it's supposed to be like this. Um, it's just a lot better to get a, an actual feel for it. And because we're always behind a desk or behind a counter, we don't get out to the range too often. We just get to go play and see what we like and see what we don't like and go from there. I'm Dave from uh, NAS Guns uh, down in Niagara. Coming out and shoot some shotguns, pistols, rifles, bagheras, Formula Ones, all of it really. Other companies do indoor events. This is the only one that you can get out and play. Free lunch, free all day, free ammo. I love it. We started five years ago. This was our fifth annual range day. It was a small thing. It was kind of the local dealers the first time we tried that. Uh, we've been very fortunate with the facilities here at Galt. We have the shotgun ranges so we can spend uh, time on the shotgun ranges and we have a 200 yard restricted range so we have time with the handguns, ARs, as well as our long guns down there. I'm Ken from Bullseye London. Uh, once again, here with the, uh, the guys from Odell Engineering uh, for the range day, we're getting to check out some of their products. Odell's got some great, uh, great things coming to the market. Some of it's been established and well known for uh, for years with uh, some of their brands. And obviously, there's going to be some new stuff coming down the pipe, which uh, hopefully our customers will be excited for. The biggest one, of course, is our Canuck line, and that is our in-house brand. It is uh, primarily a shotgun line, but it, it's hunting shotguns as well as competitive shotguns. We really like working with the guys. One of uh, one of our favorite distributors to deal with for sure, and, and he's always willing to work with us. And uh, we've got a good, strong relationship with these guys, so it's always great to see him here. In all the products he brings in, he stands 100% behind it. You know, from them selling you the guns to warranty and return, there's there's no problems in between. You know, it's great shipping, just a great business to deal with. Phil brings a, a wealth of knowledge to the community. He's got a background in the engineering field uh, within the firearm sector. Some of the people that he sat down at the table with would blow your mind. His engineering, his understanding of firearms, actions, what's needed to, to produce a quality, reliable firearm, and that's what he's bringing into the design of his Canuck products. So we're bringing quality um, at a value price to the market. It's nice to see everybody here, and we know most of them, and we don't get to spend as much time as we do at a, a day like today, so we get some good interaction get to talk a lot about industry stuff. We, we find we have a lot of the same things in common, and a lot of the same issues, and we're all working together for the, the shooting sports. It's all about the firearms community and sticking together, because that's what we need to do. If we start to break apart because this guy's got that sale or that guy's got that sale, it's not about that. It's about sticking together and actually growing the sport and letting the government know we're a safe bunch of people. There's going to be a huge economic impact if, uh, you know, bans and confiscations and further restrictions and whatever else is rumored to be coming down. As an industry, are completely cast adrift on how changes in regulations are going to come down and are going to affect us. Do people not realize that what they're going to take away from actual families? It feeds my family. It sends my daughter to school. The touch and the outreach, the impact on families, you know, it, it's a multiplying effect. It's down to the government and it's down to us as individuals to come together collectively because you look at all these other groups that do it collectively, they get a bargaining deal from the government, but it just seems to us that we don't because we are law-abiding gun owners that are criminally checked every single day. It's not necessarily just about the firearms, this is about an erosion of freedoms and privileges that we have in Canada. And one of the reasons people come to Canada, I mean, we've got huge immigration numbers, everybody knows that. 
but they come here specifically for those freedoms and you know it starts with guns and then who knows what's next after that so we gotta stand our ground. And one of the things we like to do is put on little little product workshops. So you'll see little groups of people during the day getting together with our reps and they'll be learning about the key details of the product line. New improvements in safety equipment, optics, sights that work on the uh, guns, uh, new finishes. We also get to speak to the distributors and in some cases even the manufacturers to up our product knowledge. It's, um, it, it's like a product knowledge session with live fire. And for us, that's invaluable when we're dealing with our customers. We, we try to present value, uh, value both to the dealer in terms of it's, it's a line that they can make money on, but also value to the end consumer. And in that, we work with our manufacturers to come up with configurations, colors, models that are really suited to the Canadian market. Oh, oh they're bringing some shotguns with some innovative features, uh, stuff that normally custom manufacturers here charge a lot of money for. And to see these entry-level shotguns coming in that are competing with high-dollar items, it's impressive. We had an awesome time. Everybody shot a bunch of guns, and guess what? The only injury was I think I walked into something. It's the greatest sport you're ever going to enjoy, but we had a great day. Have a great day. Thanks for coming out. The CCFR's Canada Downrange is brought to you by The Shooting Edge, SFRC, Select Shooting Supplies, The Calgary Shooting Centre, Target Sports Canada, and Canuck and Bagheera. Hey guys, it's Rod with your pro tip. Uh, today I want to talk about one of the most important things you can do for your community, and that is take people shooting. Take beginners, novices as we call them in the business, take them shooting and so that they can discover why we own guns, why we're so excited and so passionate about firearm ownership. So if you want to do something beneficial, something that will help hold our rights together during all, all these times of, of assault against our rights, that's the way to do it. Why? Because there's going to be more people that understand why people own guns, more people that see the value in owning guns, and more gun owners. And so that creates a, a, a bigger voting block. That just, it's a, more difficult to take something away from a larger group of people. So how do you do that? There's a right way and really, really pretty much there's a wrong way. In my experience, teaching probably 4,000 beginners over the span of my personal career as an instructor, is you want to make people feel comfortable. That's probably the most important thing because most people associate guns with injury or death, guns with violence. And why? Uh, who can blame them? The media runs that stuff day in and day out. So they're going to be nervous at the best of times. Now some people will respond to kind of adrenaline sports, right? They're adrenaline junkies. And some people are, they're intimidated by this whole thing. So it's probably your job to figure out who you've got there. So let's say you got a young guy and he's involved in a lot of sports he's in a four by four club. He's, he's jumped, out, jumped out of an airplane a couple of times, gone skydiving. You're like, okay, you know what? Let's start with something a little bit more exciting. Let's start with an AR-15. AR-15s, almost no recoil and super loud. Sometimes if the barrel's short, there's a big flash, big fire come out of the end, that will probably hook them pretty quickly. If you've got someone like, let's say you're trying to take your wife, you've recently discovered guns, you've gotten the PAL, you bought some guns, you've gotten familiar, and you're like, you know what, I want to take my wife out. Maybe she's, maybe she's not sure why you wanted guns in the first place, and I'm speaking from experience. So if you're going to take someone like that out, maybe you want to start with a 22. And, and the secret behind that is make it fun for them, make it very easy and comfortable for them, and then you can move them up to some more aggressive firearms. So there's a lot of people out there. You know, I think a great example is if you go to, go to YouTube and you type in something like firearm accidents or gun accidents, you'll find people, you know, they take their girlfriend out to the bush. A lot of times these are in the United States just because firearms are a little bit more accessible there, obviously. They'll take their girlfriend out to the bush. They'll say, oh, try shooting the shotgun. And they'll load, you know, some slugs in there and they'll have her go and shoot the shotgun. First time she's ever discharged a firearm. Of course, the gun goes 
goes flying, not safe, and she falls down, what are the chances that she's gonna go out and become a gun owner soon, right? Probably zero. So in my experience, keep that in mind and really monitor the person while they're going through, through this experience. You may wanna keep them shooting a 22 and maybe move up to something a little bit bigger very slowly, or maybe they're like, hey, I'm ready for the next thing. I wanna shoot a shotgun. Well, yeah, no problem. Let's shoot a shotgun then. I will give you one more tip too. In my experience, if you've got someone that is looking for a bit of a thrill, they're at the point where you think they can handle it safely, the shotgun as a firearm, there's a lot of recoil there. It's very sharp. And what I found when I used to run these beginners, uh, beginner introduction courses is when people wanna shoot a shotgun, if this is permissible at your range, again, make sure that it's okay at your range, walk right up to the berm, if it's all sand kind of thing, and let them shoot a shotgun from the hip. And you know that it's safe, the shot's not gonna go anywhere unpredictable, it's gonna go right into the berm, and that way it's not on their shoulder. Because if, if they get hit on the shoulder hard, they're gonna get a bruise, and they're gonna associate that with the, the experience with shooting firearms. So again, make sure that you understand who you're taking, if they're intimidated, start them off slow. Make sure that they're, they're starting to actually grab onto this whole gun thing and having a good time before you move them up to something else. Or if it's someone that's a thrill seeker, yeah, start them off with a, with a shotgun or an AR-15. That'll work just fine for them. Um, also, try to be as educated on the topic as you can yourself so that you can answer a lot of the questions, uh, even just how to get a PAL, which you'll find out in these pro tips as well. So hopefully that helps. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Remember, if you don't stand up for your own ability to own and use firearms, who will? Join the CCFR or donate right now at www.firearmrights.ca.